أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به عز وجل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أيها المسلمون with the Lord's name the merciful benefactor the merciful redeemer all praise belongs to Allah the God and evolver the cherisher keeper sustainer of all the systems of knowledge all the systems of science we seek his help we ask for his forgiveness. We put our faith and our trust in him. Mighty and sublime is he. I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah alone, the one and only, there is none like unto him. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to whom the Quran was revealed 1400 years ago, is Allah's servant Messenger Prophet to all of mankind. We ask Allah's peace, His blessings, His highest exaltations be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, upon his family, his companions, the righteous all. On you, O Muslims, be peace. Assalamu alaikum. <clears throat> that is greetings to our few brothers that we have here and our sister visiting with us today, Brother Munib and Sister Salima from Washington, D.C. And I share with them, like we shared with Wali Furkan uh, last week and Sister Linda from St. Louis, that we are not open, Masjid is not officially open, but we don't turn anyone around, especially someone that came all the way from Washington, D.C. And we're happy uh, that you all decided, hope you're having a wonderful time in Jacksonville, Florida. They're up at Media Island. And I told them, I said, that's the most beautiful part. Well, that part of Vedra. So if you go north, it's in Media Island. And if you go further south in Jacksonville, it's part of Vedra. So we're happy to have you all with us. Please, uh, we need give my friend, Imam Talib Sharif, Greetings for me when you get back to Washington, D.C. and all my friends, Jihad of the Salaam and the believers there, Yusuf Salim and so many others. Greetings to our Facebook Live audience, those of you all from around the United States of America and all over the world. And our audience is growing consistently, constantly by the grace of Allah. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank God and thank you all for being uh, so consistent with us. And I know this pandemic has got us all, well, we back on alert. And I never let my, my guard down. I never didn't let it down. 
but they're telling us that the Delta variant is uh, more contagious and in some respects more deadly. And in Florida, we have to be very careful. Uh, unfortunately, we have leadership in the state that is choosing to ignore science. But I applaud the Broward County School District and so many others in Florida that say they're listening to the medical professionals. Uh, you don't go to a mechanic when you have a medical problem. So we want to listen to the experts, those that God bless to exert themselves and qualify to be professionals in the medical field and science and give us the best advice. Welcome to our YouTube live audience. We are up today. We are on YouTube. We pray a lot we can stay up on YouTube live, but if for whatever reason, the feed, we have problems technically, you can always go over to the Facebook page, Masjid Muhammad, and see us there on Facebook live. And we will, as always, post the Juma later to our YouTube channel, Al Islam Worldwide Ministry. Let us have a moment of silent prayer for world peace, mutual respect, mutual cooperation, and also include in our prayers that God bless us in these United States of America to eliminate this gun violence. And if not eliminate it, at least reduce it and keep us safe. And me. And our heartfelt prayers, well wishes to our sister who's competing in the Olympics from our community, Dalila Muhammad. We pray Allah, Imam Maskil, Muhammad's daughter, uh, uh, Sister Nassim, I leave her, I uh, think Nassim, her name is, her niece. So we pray that she's doing uh, do well today. I think she runs today the 400. Sister Dalila Muhammad. She received. She won a gold uh, medal uh, back in 2016. She won a gold medal. So this is her special time, and our prayers are with our sister Dalila Muhammad, that's representing the United States in the Olympics. Greetings to my family. Extended family in Dallas, Texas, Islamic Association, the Soto, Texas, all of you all over there. You know, I love you. It's so wonderful. Looking forward to visiting you soon, inshallah, when the weather cool off a bit and you get a grip on this virus. All of you all joining us from Ghana, India, Nigeria, Senegal, <clears throat> my family and friends in Bermuda. Indonesia, our sister Junaina, I know you're on watching us. Greetings to you in Malaysia, the Philippines, Kenya, Mexico, Dama Eubanks, Ajib in Albania, U.S. Virgin Islands, Omadosa, I mean Mohammed. And then our brother, I've seen you a few times, uh, dear brother, from Saudi Arabia in Riyadh, Sajid Khan. Welcome, our brother of Saudi Arabia. And we're happy that you join us. He's, he's regular with us uh, on the Juma prayer, Brother Sadja Khan from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. <clears throat> now our subject today, let's get right to it. And this will conclude it, inshallah, God willing. Uh, this is part four. So if you've missed the other parts, you can go scroll down to the video section of our page, Masjid Muhammad, or you can go on YouTube and type in the meaning of the positions of Salat, the meaning of the positions of Salat and prayer. Why are we doing what we do in this ritual that we call Salat, the ritual prayer? And many of us and many Muslims around the world have just gotten into the routine of habitually just doing something and no understanding, no meaning, of what it is you're doing and why we're doing it and the tangible, practical application of the positions themselves. Not just what we're saying in the Salat, the prayer, but the positions. And I told you when I started this that there were four major positions. The Qiyam, the standing position, the Rukul, the bowing to the knee position, 
Last week we talked about sajda, the prostration, and today we will conclude it with the qa'da jalsa. Some say jalsa, qa'da. You can use either word because they have different meanings. Qa'da means the sitting position. Jalsa means to sit also, but jalsa is associated with the word medlis, meaning that you're in a meeting or a gathering. If you're in a group setting, yes, the jamaah is a group setting, or if you have a group prayer. But that position, ta'ada, the sitting position. So that's the four major positions. And of course, taslim, the greeting that concludes the salah. So I'll be sharing with you, of course, readings from the Quran, I reference Quran, and tafsir, commentary of Imam Walithuddin Muhammad, God granted the high station in paradise on these meaning of the positions of salah. So we go right away to the Quran, chapter 3, verse 190 and 191. Bismillahir Rahim, with God's name, the merciful, benefactor, the merciful, redeemer. Inna fi khalqis samawati wal ardi, wa tilafi layli wa nahari, la ayatin, that's repeated many times in the Quran. There are those who have foundation of knowledge. Those who come through the first door of knowledge. What's the first door of knowledge? Creation. Creation is the first door. It's the foundation of knowledge. The first door, the foundation of knowledge. Translating, behold, in the creation, God revealed to Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, prayers and peace be upon our Prophet. Behold, in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alternation of night and day, night, day, day, night, they follow each other. Darkness, enlightenment, follow each other. Enlightenment, Darkness, follow each other. Hmm? The cycle of night and day. There are indeed signs, instruction signs, ayat, for men and women of understanding. Ulu let bad. Those who have foundational knowledge. Verse 191. And Ladini Yathkurun You hear Qiyam? The standing position. Qiyam. Wakuudan. Now that's the word I mentioned to you earlier. Kada. Kuudan. Doesn't say Jalsa here now. Kuudan. I read the one that says Jalsa. Jalsa or Mejlis. Because there's only one place in the Quran. Now this word has many places in the Quran. Kuudan. See. Wakuudan. Wa ala junubihim. Wa yatathakkaruna. Fi khalqi sahawati wal arbi. Rabbina ma khalakta hadha. Ba'atilan subhanaka faqina adhab al-nar. Sadaq al God, the mighty spoke the truth. <clears throat> Behold, verse 1 and says, so I have to read the sort of, because it flows. Behold, in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alternation of night and day, there are indeed instructing signs for men and women of understanding. Men and women, al-ladhini yadhkuruna, those who celebrate the praises of Allah. Now listen, standing, qiyam. That's the this is the salat position to begin. Standing, qiyam. But it's also telling us while you're on your feet, you can praise God. You don't have to be. It doesn't have to be salat on your feet while you're standing up. You'll be walking. You're standing up. You can be in your home walking, and thanking God, praising God. It doesn't have to be prayer time. See, standing up. God is saying, why are you up? Why are you standing? And for those who have taken a stand, yeah, stand for justice, praise God. Uh, I was watching this morning the news and the marchers, aren't they on their feet when they're walking? They're walking. And they're praising God. And they're walking for 
justice, civil rights. They don't even call it too much civil rights uh, anymore. Just protesters. Protesting for the right to vote, not have our vote suppressed, and they're on their feet, standing, and they're walking, praising God. Kiyam. Kuudan, sitting. Now, that's the prayer position where we're sitting. That's the fourth one. They say, Jalsa Kuudan, Jalsa Kuudan, the sitting position. But in most of our messages, and when I come in here and I'm looking, you can typically tell the age of the message members by how many chairs you have in here. <laughs> because most of them can't sit. Now, I will be he's, he's much older than I am, but he sits, he's on the floor where we're supposed to put everything sit on the floor for the, to the prayer. But because of age, health issues, back problems, and all kinds of other problems. We need the chairs to support. And we're not the only ones to do this now. You can go overseas and find chairs for, that will accommodate the Muslims who want to come and pray. But because of some weakness or infirmity in the body, they facilitate them and allow them to sit in chairs. So we have the sitting position for Muslims and the prayer where we are sitting and we are praying in that position. Greetings to the Prophet. Tahiyatu lillah. Greetings to Allah. And then Muhammad the Prophet, the prayer of Ibrahim. And we make our dhikr. And we make dua. Sitting in that position. So God says, men and women who celebrate the praises of Allah, God, standing, sitting, now. Most of us don't know that this is is in the Quran and we can do this. Laying down in the bed on your side or back, depending on the position if you're sick. So God has revealed to Muhammad the prophet that if you can't get up for the prayer and stand, you can't sit up and, and uh, pray because something you can sit. But you're incapacitated and you're Lying down, God forbid, but we have people in convalescent homes, Muslims. And we have people who might be sick that are not in convalescent homes. And you're at home and it's prayer time, but you can't get out of bed. You're exhausted. You're feeling bad. You, you, you're lying down. God says, pray to me in that position. I had you new to him. You can't get up for some Oh, I got to get out of bed. Why? This is not an extreme religion. God doesn't require us to put ourselves to extreme. So he's giving all these allowances. So you don't have to harm yourself, hurt yourself. You can't get out the bed, pray. How? Go through the prayer positions in your mind. That's what Allah says. This is mine. Yeah, yeah, I'm reading this. Chapter 3, verse 191. I'm telling you what God reveals to the prophet. Say, yeah, tell them, Muhammad, I, I, I allow for them to, I know they can't get up and pray. They can't stand. They can't sit. They, they just barely can turn over in the bed. Well, pray to me. In fact, you should be praying that more at that time. So God said, I allowed you to move him. Pray on your sides. And contemplate. And reflect. Contemplate the marvels, the wonders of creation in the skies and the earth. Marvel, reflect on the sun. Reflect on the moon and its message or messages. Not just one. Reflect on the stars. As one poet reflecting on the stars say, the night, the day has one eye, the sun, and the night has many eyes. So the stars has eyes. This is poetic language now. The, the day has one eye, but one eye, the sun, and the night has many eyes. So we can share the heavens together, can't we? 
Stars. <laughs> it's not just one star. Many stars. And Hollywood has a lot of stars, don't they? But that's, that's frivolous stars. The powerful sign in the creation, God is telling them, and those stars are lights. They are light. You can look at it. And they're so numerous, you can't number them. You can't count them. You can, you can stay up all night long trying to calculate the number of stars in the sky, and you won't be able to do it. So why can't we allow room for stars on this earth other than us selfish? Yeah, I got to be the star. Well, when I look at the sky, I see plenty of stars out there shining. You ain't the only one shining. There's a whole lot of stars shining. And you shine in your way. You shine in the gifts that God has given you. So God is trying to teach man. Look, you got all these stars out here with all this light. Why are you being selfish? You're not the sun. I ain't made with one son. I made you all to be like stars. Now you can be a son too. The Christians, they put it in their songs and they put it in the Bible. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Huh? So you can shine like that. You can have a sunlight inside yourself, the moonlight inside yourself. Yeah, the rational mind and the spiritual mind, you can have that inside. Because those things, those marvels and wonders of creation, uh, Signs of what God has created in us in the principle. And contemplate the wonders of creation. So what I wanted to give you was the Qaeda, man, the Qodan. I'm going to read for me now W. Muhammad's language, but I want to finish the verse. And we'll talk about the, the Jalsa Qaeda. See, Qodud. And you marvel over the creation in the heavens and the earth with this thought. Our Lord, that. Bartila. Our Lord, you did not create all, create all of this for nothing. This is not put up here the sun for nothing, the moon for nothing, the stars for nothing. God, you didn't make all this, all these planets for nothing and the solar system for nothing just because you didn't have anything else to do. No. He said, our Lord, not for nothing. Did I, did I create all of this? It benefits us. Sakara lekum gems. Sakara lekum kamar. Sakara lekum nujum. And he has made of service the sun. Gems. He has made the sun to serve you. And before man understood that, he used to worship the sun. And if the sun had a mind, the sun would probably say, wait a minute. I, I put up here to serve you, not you, not you serve me. You're not supposed to worship me. I am at your service. As the Arabs say, I am at your service. I'm here to serve you, the sun. The moon, I'm here to serve you. They used to worship it. Ancient Egyptians. Osiris the sun, he put names on it. Osiris the sun, Isis the moon, mm -hmm. the stars. God said, I have put them there to serve you. You are supposed to, man, study the sun, study the moon, study the stars, and bring their power under your utility so you can benefit from it in a real way. And man has done that and, and continues to do it in a marvelous way. The animals can't do it. Only man can. Glory to thee, God, and save us from the punishment of the hellfire. That's the dua that the prophet taught us when you're watching creation. So we should pray that. That's chapter 3, verse 191. Okay. Imam W.D. Muhammad. Uniformity in prayer. Imam Vernon Fareed, Sister Suya Fareed, she is printing these books. Her phone number is, those of you all who are 
on Facebook. You can look in the comments. She put her phone number there, Sister Suya Faree. And Sister Suya, if you're on now, please put your phone number there in the comments section so they know how to reach you to get this book. So on page 48, Imam Muhammad commenting on Jalsah or Qa'ada, the sitting position, the meaning. What does it represent? Jalsa sitting Qa'ada represents support. Listen carefully. Support, we're sitting in there. Support from the masses. Now this has a direct relationship to industry and commerce. I'll read it. Quote, so now when you look at what we are doing in this Salah prayer, we are giving, we are enacting, we are acting out the rise and fall of man as a civilized being. So let me, let me read this, because I'm going to give you support for this. Uh, what he just said here, 58 and 11. يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا قيل لكم تفسحوا في المجالس. That's what you get Jelsa. Chapter 58 verse 11. في المجالس. فافسحوا يفسح الله لكم وإذا قيل انشزوا فانشزوا يرفع الله الذين آمنوا منكم. وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرْجَاتٍ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرٌ All you who believe, when you are asked and told to make room in the majalisi, in the assemblies, see? So, Jalassa, now this is the only place in the Quran you will find this word, this chapter and verse right here, that's it. You have no other reference for it. Jealousy, when you see it, uh, coming up from the sajda, we sit. But that position is more often called ka'ada, ka'ada, plural, ka'ada, than it is jealousy. But it could be either one. But this reference, now, why am I giving you this? It's not left up to us on how we utilize the language. Imam W. Muhammad taught us in America, and many scholars around the world teach their students also. If you want to understand the Quran, let the Quran explain itself. See how the words are used in the context of the Quran. So if I just mention to you that there's only one place that the word Jalsa is used, then you take that word in the context. So let's see the context. Oh, you who believe, when you are told to make room in the assemblies, spread out and make room. Ample room, ample room will Allah provide for you. And when you are told, now listen carefully now, to rise up, rise up, Allah will raise you up darajah, to suitable ranks and degrees. Those of you who believe and who have been granted knowledge and Allah is well acquainted with all that you do. Okay? Alright. So now we go back to what Imam Muhammad said. And by the way, Kada I'm making these connections for you. Kada has a meaning and a connection the Kawaid, grammar, establishment, foundation. Mm hmm. Kawaid, right? Okay, Imam Muhammad. So now, when you look at what we're doing in this prayer, we're giving, we're enacting, we're acting out the rise and fall of man as a civilized being. When you finish and come up from Sajda, the prostration, the last time you sit, you're supposed to be, or you are supported by, pardon me, you're supported by your thighs and your legs. Now, if you want the support of the masses, perform as God wants you to perform, and you can sit and rest on the throne. That's really the masses that support you. 
The seed of it is the masses that support you. But isn't it your innate life, he asked, your original life, before the world spoils it? Isn't it also what you sit upon and it supports you? Deen al fitra, the religion of the natural way in the natural order. This is also the people. You're sitting upon the people. Those who do nothing but support you spiritually and are not just ready to offer spiritual support, but those who support industry, the right leg. The masses who support industry and progress for the society. They're on the right side. This comes from Egypt too. When you go to Egypt, he says, I've seen it and I'm sure you've been there. Yep, I have. By the grace of the Lord, I've been to Egypt and I've seen it. There's a huge statue of the ruler and instead of his legs, you look at two men. His left and right legs are not legs, really, they are two men. Most of these sciences and religion go back to ancient Egypt. They were advanced long before the rest of the world and they got the spiritual sciences long before the rest of the world. The rest of the world got something from them and started using it. Not that they didn't have anything before, but they got what they got from Cairo they said was much bigger and much deeper, so they borrowed from it. Now I read that. Now let me make a connection for you on this. Sitting in the Imam Muhammad saying, I'm talking about in the tangible world, recently. And the legs representing the masses, support from the masses. The United States economy is consumer-based majority, more than anything else. 70% of the people in the United States economy that make up the economy are the masses, the consumers. This is a consumer-based economy. And in the corporate world and the commercial world, the corporate world and the commercial world really couldn't thrive, progress, make success, be successful, pardon me, if it was not for the legs, the masses that they sit upon. Because hmm? we sitting up and climb up in the prayer position, we're on our legs. We're sitting on our legs. And what is supporting the body at that point are our legs, the thighs and the legs. So what supports the body of industry in America, in the world? What supports the corporate world? What supports the commercial world? It is the legs, the masses. And those at the top, hmm, I want to say they begin to recognize it. They already do it. But they are beginning to show some appreciation, a little more appreciation for the support they get from the masses. I have a tangible example I'm going to give you. Now, this just happened yesterday or the day before. And I said when I heard it, it's about time. Walmart. Walmart is giving full tuition. Yeah. To all of their workers for college. They're paying the tuition for all of their workers in college. Now what took Walmart so long? The masses have been supporting them. They've been supported the legs for Walmart are the typical consumers. And their workers for Walmart barely, they changed it, but they were barely making minimum wage. So our position in the Salah is to bring to the attention of these industrialists, you wouldn't be able to sit on the economic throne if it wasn't for the legs, if it wasn't for the masses. Hmm? Amazon Jeff Bezos, Mr. Bezos, gave $100 million to an African-American, Van Jones. Congratulations, Van Jones, applaud uh, Amazon. And for what? 
so he can do more work because he worked with the legs, the masses. So his friend, Mr. Bezos, with Amazon, appreciate the work that he's doing with the masses, that Van is doing with the masses. And he's a friend of my dear friend out in San Francisco, Imam Abu Qatar al Amin, in the Bay Area. Mr. Bezos recognized and showed some appreciation. So how is Amazon worth almost a trillion dollars from the masses? The masses. I buy books on Amazon.com. I buy products. You shop on Amazon. Eh? So they have they, grown as a, I'm, I'm showing you tangible examples of what our prayer represent in the real world. Eh? So we sit in there, but we're not conscious. So Imam Muhammad explained this position to us. Yeah, we're sitting on our legs. But what is it a sign of? It's a sign of how the common people, the masses of the people, uphold those on the top. Keep the industry going. Keep it progressing. So Van Jones receives a hundred million dollars to work for the masses, to continue to help the masses. So congratulations, Van Jones. And we applaud Mr. Jeff Bezos. And Walmart, congratulations to you. You finally came around. And that's a wonderful thing to be able to pay the tuition for all of your workers. That's a big deal to go to college. They're paying full tuition. So if you're working for Walmart, I know some of y'all might go work for them now if you want to go to college. <laughs> be smart. <laughs> They paid the tuition for everybody to go to school. I guess they looked at LeBron James and said, well, if that young man, if he didn't have the bids we had, but he could put up a school in Akron, Ohio, for all the children, and when they finished the school to go to college, he paid the tuition for them to go to college. And then he came back and said, for all your parents and everybody who didn't get their GED, I pay for them to get their GED. So I guess the big people on high said, wait, wait, wait a minute. He was a poor young man. And he can have that kind of sensitivity? We should be ashamed of ourselves. So whatever the motivation was, congratulations. Now, Tesneem, so I, and that's brief coming. So he met Muhammad. You're sitting comfortably on the throne. And you've testified in this position. Or Jeff said. The sitting position. This is the meaning of our prayer. You've testified while on the throne. Now you have established government. And you're sitting on the throne. Now something comes to my mind. In the Quran, Allah says... And eight shall hold up the throne. I don't know if you all recall reading that. It said eight shall hold up the throne. Okay, let me sit this here. I don't want my book to fall. I'm going to show you the eight. Yeah, let's put my book right here. I'm going to point out the eight to you. It says an eight shall hold up the throne. Now, if you were paying attention from last week, and I read to you the positions that touch the floor. Two hands, the two feet, count them now, that's four, two feet, two, the feet, that's two, the hands, well, no, the knee, two, the two knees, four, two hands, six, four hands, seven, the nose, eight. Those are the eight points that touch the flow. And dear Christian brothers and sisters, greetings to you, I didn't greet you today, my Jewish friends, shalom to you. So this is our prayer position for the Muslims on the floor. And God says, an eight shall hold up the throne. What throne? The throne of intelligence that we sit on. So if we prostrate, bow, have eight points, touch the floor, and we rise up, Allah, we sit. 
father, Odin, or Joseph, and we're sitting there and we pray, Allahumma fir Muhammad, God forgive me and have mercy on us, huh? Because once you're sitting on the throne, you can get carried away. You can forget how you got there in the first place. And if you're not conscious of God, you'll lose your establishment on the throne. So Allah revealed to Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, eight will keep it up, eight will hold up the throne. You keep prostrating, you keep making those eight points, touch that blow, you'll be all right. And when you get down there, as I told you last week, you say what? Three times. Subhanahu wa rabbi al-a'la. Glory is to my Lord. Glory is due to who? My Lord, the Most High. Not me. No. I'm glorifying God. I'm giving God, as the Christian brothers and say, Christian brothers and sisters say, give God the glory. Yeah, we do that all the time. We say subhanahu wa Rabbi al -Azim in the Ruku position. Glory is to my Lord, the mighty, the mighty, the powerful. And then when we make the sajda, subhanahu rabbi al glory is to my Lord, the most high. And God is higher than anybody, any nation, any society, any group of people. God is higher. Eh? Glory is due to God, the most high. Eight shall hold up the throne. Okay, so I showed you the eight. Let me come back to this. And I'm almost done with the first part of this. I hope you're learning something that you didn't know before and that you can apply it. Imam Muhammad. You don't have to stand up. You got the society standing up. This is in the sitting position. You have stood up the society. Now you can relax and sit on the throne. And you can say, or as you say, peace. Now, where does the peace start? When we finish now, we're going to Teslim. And let me read the verse in the Quran on Teslim, where it's located. I'm going to give you references. Chapter 33, verse 56. Okay? So I gave you Qa'ud sitting, chapter 3, verse 191. It's actually 191. And then Jalsa, Majlis, chapter 58, verse 11. So, the Teslim, the greeting of peace. This is not the only place, but this is the one I'm going to share with you. Chapter 33, verse 56. Inna allaha wa malaikatu yusalluna ala nabiyyi ya ayyaha alladheena aminu sallu alayhi wa sallimu tasliman. See? Allah and his angels Send blessings on the prophet. Here is you suddenly translated blessings here. Send blessings on the prophet. Oh, you who are believers, you do likewise and send blessings on him also. Meaning, salute the prophet. Salute, send peace blessing. Send your blessings on him and salute him with recognition and all due respect. Well, suddenly move Taslim. Give your respect to the prophet. And in other parts of the Quran, it says, and give due respect to the believers. So someone texted me the other day, as I get these often, and asked, why do we only do one test lean? I explained it many times when we have Janaza. But why do we only do one test lean? Test lean means greetings of peace, settling from peace. Why do we only do one for the Janaza? Now there are some schools that do two. We do one. Imam Muhammad taught us, do one. Why? We say, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. To the right. And what does Allah say in the Quran? We want to receive our book. Deeds, our records of deeds. What? Ala yameen, or fi yameeni. In your right hand. You want it in your right hand. And then God talks about the favorable position in the next life. Of the Ashabu Yamini, those companions of the right, those who are righteous. See? So we're greeting for our deceased brother and sister, God forbid, grant us good health and long life. But we send that greeting only to the right. So we're greeting and wishing that our brother and sister who just passed on receive the record in their right hand of their deeds and work. 
and that they be among the righteous in the next life, in the gender, in the paradise. You, you get it now? Well, we only greet that right one time. All right. But in the Salah, we go, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Right and left. Imam Muhammad. So we say peace. We start right here at the heart, under your chin. The chin, under your mouth. Right there where your heart is, and you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. To the right first. There at your heart, and you are one person. Now, pay attention to what I just did. See, you start here. Many Muslims all over the world, there's no harm in it. They go, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. That's okay. If, if, but, but if you're thoughtful, you're not just doing rituals with no meaning. The peace is in the heart. Assalam. It starts right here in the heart. See? There's where the greeting of peace starts in the heart. Imam Muhammad. You say, Peace be unto the many. You, the many, the human heart, has the capacity to hold the whole human family. It can expand to house the whole human family. And you recognize the great capacity of the human heart. That God has expanded for you. And Allah says to Muhammad the Prophet, What? Have we not expanded for you your chest, your heart? Eh? You say, Assalamu alaikum. My heart houses all of you. My heart reaches out to all of you. Assalamu alaikum. And because I have come to this beautiful state as a thinker and as a lover of mankind. I can now tell the conscious order on the right of society, peace be unto you. Peace be unto you, in the, in the industrialists. Peace be unto you, government leaders. Peace be unto all of you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and the mercy of God. God's mercy is with us because we have conformed in the best mode that he created for our development as human beings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The one who has performed and conformed extends his greetings to those in the conscious workings of society, responsible for upholding the beauty and life of society over here on the right. Then, because he and they are awake and conscious, now they can communicate the same to the ignorant and dead on the left. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to those of you all on the left. And we conclude the prayer. We say, Taqabullah. May Allah accept our prayers. We greet each other. Taqabullah. God accept our prayers. In concluding this, a Muslim life is a conscious life. The life is the word of God, the real life. That life is a conscious life. We have to live consciously, not by habit. Live consciously, and it improves the habit. This is the meaning of greeting Assalamu Alaikum and then to the left. First, if you establish the conscious life in peace, it will take care of the unconscious life. You greet those on the right, look where it starts now. It all comes from the heart, starts from the heart. The greeting starts here. Don't start on the shoulder. And I know what the Bible says that a dove landed on Christ Jesus' shoulder as a sign of peace. But the peace comes from the heart. So the Muslims start with the greeting in the heart. Assalamu alaikum. Then turn. We'll start right here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Then come back to the heart. Because we want to send our heart out to the left now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You greet those on the right, then turn left. Where is conscious behavior going to come from, Imam Muhammad asked. What's going to improve my habit life? Improve my unconscious behavior. It is my conscious behavior. If you want to strengthen the behavior of a person, build their conscious behavior, and that will strengthen their unconscious behavior. After a while, the conscious behavior becomes their unconscious behavior. 
That's how it works. As I conclude this, he says, the mistake in the religious world is that to think to the left, you have to give life to the right. No, that's how it comes in the beginning. God made us in the beginning knowing nothing. But then he put something in our bodies. We inherit human intelligence, human soul and behavior. We inherit this. So the baby comes here with the life of the left, unconscious. Then we educate the baby and the baby's life becomes the conscious life. And the baby's left becomes a left now created by the right. I hope you all understood stood that and I hope you appreciate what I've shared with you from Imam What is the Deen Muhammad commentary on the Quran, the Allahu Akbar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salat wa salam ala Rasul al-Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd ayyuhal muslimun that is with God's name the merciful benefactor the merciful redeemer peace and blessings be upon our noble generous and kind messenger Muhammad the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Greetings and peace to his family. Greetings to all of you brothers and sisters on Facebook Live, our Juma Conference Line. And I forgot our Juma Conference Line and our YouTube audience that's live with us today. And I forgot, Allah just put it back on my mind to remind me that Imam Rashad Mujahid from Tallahassee, Masjid al Nahlu, the Masjid of the Worker Bees in Tallahassee, our community to the west of us, uh, they are with us today for the Juma prayer. So we welcome you, Masjid and Nahlu uh, from Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, forgive me for overlooking you when I started in the greetings, but Allah put it back on my mind. We're happy to have you with us always. And my dear friend, childhood friend that I grew up with here in Jacksonville, Florida, the Imam there, Allah. Peace be with him also and his community in Tallahassee. Welcome. <clears throat> now we're shifting, shifting our focus for the second part of the Juma, very briefly, on community issue, community concern. And for us, the biggest concern for us, as I've shared with you many times, and I'm going to keep saying it until it changes, economics, money, finance, business. And I have this book, I've been reading, I've been sharing it with you, and I'm going to share it with you again today. And this is important for us in America, specifically the African American community. Now, this is called the color of money. You've seen me hold this up before, so this is not new. If you if this is your first time joining us to Juma, it's new to you. The color of money, black banks, and the racial racial wealth gap by Mercer Baradaran, Harvard scholar wrote this book, 2019. And the premise of the book is the economic circumstances behind us and how African Americans coming out of slavery were able to establish economic financial institutions in America, what happened to them. You'll find this an amazing read. In fact, it says here, the Atlantic Quotes. <clears throat> this is a deep accounting of how America got to a point where a median white family has 13 times more wealth than the median, this is their language, black family or African American family. So they tell you how we wind up in the shape we're in right now. This is a historical account of it. And it chops it. Okay, so I wanna read something as I conclude here from page 10. I've read this to you before, but this deserves repeating. Quote, so we know how we got here. What we gotta do to get out of this? Slavery, now I'm reading this from the book, so don't you all be overly sensitive in the audience now. I didn't write this book. This is not a book by Imam Yahya Abdullah. So don't get overly sensitive. This is a person, honest, 
uh, according of what happened to our community economically and what we have to do to change it, okay? Quoting from page 10, The Color of Money. Slavery, America's original sin, according to James Madison, created the foundation, I hope you listen to this carefully, created the foundation of modern American capitalism. Mm. It was slavery and the blood drawn with the lash. This is for you critics out there to say we haven't contributed anything to America. <laughs> and why some African Americans are promoting and pushing reparations. It was slavery and the blood drawn with the flesh, with the lash, pardon me, L-A-S-H, the lash that opened the arteries of capital and commerce that led to the U.S. economic dominance worldwide. Did you hear that? The effects of the institution of slavery on American commerce were monumental. 3.2 million slaves at that time were worth $1.3 billion in market value, almost equal to the entire gross national product. Slaves were also a valuable store of capital because they were liquid assets, liquid assets like cash that could be exchanged on markets more easily than other forms of property. Slavery's unparalleled bounty is what caused many Americans to tolerate such a barbarous institution, a barbarous institution. Growing international demand for cotton fueled the growth of slavery and the legal and political arms of the state maintained and protected it. Now some of you all out there, boy, why is he man talking about slavery? I'm not talking about slavery. I'm reading from a book that's written on it in 2019. And I didn't write the book. A scholar wrote it. A professor wrote it. And this person is not, I don't believe, African American. But they were taking a look at our circumstances and said, well, how did they, these people get here? Well, let's go back and do what? Research history. Let me continue. I have a couple of more sentences. More cotton led to more profits, which led to more demand for slaves which led to more legislation supporting slavery and then even crueler methods of oppression to extract more work from slaves. The institution of slavery was so at odds with the liberal notions of equality allowed in America's founding documents that a theory of racial hierarchy was used to explain away the dissonance. Now, they had a theory of racial hierarchy but they don't want critical race theory taught. It doesn't matter to me one way or the other because my, my personal opinion of this, now this is my opinion I'm giving you now, which I'm entitled to. I don't depend on anybody to educate me. That's my responsibility. So I don't know why you all are complaining. Well, they won't let us teach critical Teach it to your children yourself. Educate your children to yourself. Nobody's responsible for, for us receiving education. Educate your children yourself. Don't depend on them to do it. Don't even argue with them. Make yourself look like you aren't responsible or can't handle your own affairs. Oh, I need you to teach me this. No, I don't need you to teach me anything. I don't mean that in an arrogant way. I'm saying if you say we shouldn't be taught that, well, and we're not going to teach it. They're passing laws in some states banning that. But they didn't ban racial hierarchy. Taught that and continue to teach it. So the world. America's founding documents that a theory of racial hierarchy was used to explain away the disconnect, the dissonance. Blacks, their language, had to be seen first as subhuman so that they could be treated as chattel. C-H-A-T-T-E-L, that means property. 
In the antebellum era, slave era in the South, Christian religious principles, their language, not mine, Christian religious principles were exploited to provide the rationale for racial subjugation. Not only was slavery and white supremacy condoned by God, but it was seen as God's will that white men exploit the labor of the black race. In the Christian doctrine of slavery, that's a book, a Presbyterian minister concluded, quote, it may be that Christian slavery is God's solution of the problem of labor. Did you hear that? They justified it, saying God solved their labor problem. God solved it? <laughs> How about Satan? God didn't create slavery. Satan created it. So you're going to use God to justify the subjugation of a whole race of people. And your book, the Christian, now they, they close a blind eye. You've heard me say it many times. You remember all the missionary times. They close a blind eye to this verse in the Bible. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me this whole people. Now that's how the scripture, their scripture address it, but then they come back, this Presbyterian minister, according to the author of this book, said, they said, well, uh, it may be that Christian slave, Christian slavery, they put a religion on slavery. No Muslim will go around saying Islamic slavery. What? There's no such thing. I'm saying to the whole world, there is no such thing as Islamic slavery. There's Islamic liberation, Islamic freedom, justice, and equality, but no slavery. Muhammad the prophet ended slavery. Quran says, uh, uh, What will explain to you the steep climb in the chapter of Benin, the city? Fat Kurakaba, freeing the slave, setting the slave go free. So this whole notion, I'm going to address it sometime in the future, inshallah, God willing. This whole notion of Islam supporting slavery, no such thing. Show me any verse in the Quran that supports slavery. Show it to me. If you can show me the verse in the Quran that supports slavery, I'll walk away from this religion. Now, I've been a Muslim for 48 years, so that ain't going to happen. But I mean, two things ain't going to happen. One, you're not going to be able to show me the verse. Two, I ain't walking away from this. This is my life. But I'm just telling you, I'm not interested in being a part of any religion that promotes slavery. I was born in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm going to you. I can't do it. My, my grandmother was on a plantation. God rest her soul. She told me. Her mother was on the plane. My grandfather was on the plane. My Charles, my friend Rashid, we get this. We, we, we can't tolerate that no more. You bring up slavery, I get chills in my body. I'm sure I was a relative of Nat Turner. You don't know who that is, look him up. Oh, he was violent. <laughs> It's amazing how the oppressor and the perpetrators, they stomp all on you. And when you respond to them stomping on you, they say, no, you're not supposed to take my foot off of you. Let me conclude this. It may be that Christian slavery is God's solution of the problem of labor, about which the wisest statement of Europe confessed themselves at fault. End quote. So, get the book, The Color of Money, study that history of what happened, and I'm going to share with you a companion book. Uh, I shared it with you before. The Business History of America uh, by Waterhouse, Benjamin Waterhouse, The Economic History of America, uh, and he addressed the slave issues also, Benjamin Waterhouse. I'm trying to think of the name of this book. I have it all the time. The, the, the Land of, uh, I think it's The Land of Penny. But I know the subtitle is The Business History of the United States. So if you say Benjamin Waterhouse, 
the, 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 the uh, booksellers would know who you're talking about. It's a companion book to it. Now, he's a European brother that wrote about what happened to us. And, and why am I reading this to you? Hey, I mentioned Walmart earlier about the tuition. Maybe this is a way for these billionaires to enact, and it won't just impact what they're doing with the free college and tuition, that just impact African Americans now. Because Walmart has a diverse employee, employee force. Same thing with uh, uh, employment force. Same thing with Amazon. Mm -hmm. But Walmart paying the tuition for college, college tuition for all of its workers, maybe this is part of their way of saying, hey, we want to provide some reparations at least for the African American employees that we have for what we have done to these people and how our forefathers benefited and how these people's ancestors, our African American ancestors, made America the most dominant economic power on the face of the earth. Time to pay up. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا أذاب النار. Our Lord grant us the best that this world and this life has to offer us and grant us the best that the next world has to offer us and save us from the punishment for the fires of sins. Amen. Come on, sir. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. <clears throat> Turn it around back this way, Rashid. Thank you, sir. Yeah, that one is different than the uh, camera there. And pull the top part back so we we'll uh, put it towards you. Now push it towards me. I'm sorry. A little more, a little more, a little more so they can see the salon. I'll pull it back a little to you. Right there. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> now, those of you all who are uh, online and this is your first time joining us for the prayer, you make the same two rakahs, a unit of prayer that we are making. You can see me on Facebook, you can see me on YouTube, and you can hear me on our Juma conference line. You make the same two rakahs with us. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. <clears throat> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نبض وإياك نستعين اهدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أمين ألم نشرك صدرك ووضعنا أنك وزرك الذي أنقذ ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع الأسر يسرا إن مع الأسر يسرا فإذا فرقت فانصب وإلى ربك فارجب الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين 
إياك نبود وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قل هو الله أهد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أهد الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله ربنا لا تزيد قلوبنا بعد تريتنا وحبنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاب ربنا أفرج لنا صبرا واتبع أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغلوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين تقبل الله May Allah accept our prayers uh, now those of you all who are um, wondering in the Muslim world and others why we recite Al-Fatiha audibly because in many parts of the Muslim world at the conclusion of the prayer they recite Al-Fatiha silent Imam W. D. Muhammad God grant him the high station paradise in his wisdom he said we're not Arabic speakers. We're English speaking people, Muslims in America. And Al Fatiha is the basis of the Salat. You don't make you say Al Fatiha, you, your prayer is not valid. So he said, if we say it aloud, audibly, and enough of you all hear it repeatedly, over and over and over and over and over and over, at least you will have the Al Fatiha. That's why we do that, all right? Because I know, I've prayed with Muslims all over the world, and the, at the end, the Fatiha is usually silent. But we make it audibly, so the non-Arabic speaking people in America can at least learn that Fatiha. Okay, I want to share it with you. Thank you all for joining us on Facebook Live. Uh, YouTube didn't fail us today. We happen to have our YouTube Live audience. Uh, can you pull this back just a little bit? Uh, because my head is... Yeah, no, yeah, pull that top part back. Yeah, thank you, uh, Ishmael. Um, uh, thank you for joining us live on YouTube. We didn't have any technical difficulties today. Alhamdulillah, praise God. And those of you all who join us on Facebook, you'd like to support our efforts here in Jacksonville, Florida, go to our website, www.alislam, that's A-L hyphen Islam, Worldwide Ministry dot com. When you get to the site, you'll see a donate button. You can donate online. If you'd like to mail your contribution, mail it in to Al Islam Worldwide Ministry, P.O. Box 3204, Jacksonville, Florida 32206. Thank you for those of you all who support, who mail your contributions in, who donate online. We really appreciate you. 
Now, let me say something before concluding about this virus. If you're keeping up, as you should be, this Delta variant, uh, uh, variant pardon me, is out of control. Wear your mask, wash your hands, practice social or physical distance. Now, I'm still maintaining my position. I'm not telling you what to do. Allah said the prophet, Allah revealed to the prophet in the Quran, Lesto alaykum bi wakil. I'm not set over you to manage your life. Consult your doctor, talk to your doctor about these vaccines. Because apparently, 97% of the people in the hospital, 97% of the people dying are the unvaccinated people. Visit people, use common sense. You either gonna be part of the solution or part of the problem, okay? So visit your doctor, talk with your doctor, talk with your other experts in the medical field. Don't talk to politicians that don't have a clue of uh, medicine and virus, that's a waste of time. Talk to your medical professionals, inquire about the safety, the benefit of these viruses, rather you, pardon me, vaccines, whether you can take them or not take them. Join us. Next week, same time, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Juma. You honor us. We're honored by your continued support. May God bless you. Stay safe. And be careful out there. This virus hasn't gone anywhere. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. See you next week and share Allah.